Welcome to our program today on Annie the Railroad Dog, a true story. And today it's my privilege to have with us the author of the book, uh, Arlene Albrand, who is a longtime native of resident of Fort Collins, Colorado, taught in our school system, graduate of what was then Colorado State College, which is now University of Northern Colorado. Uh, she's mother, grandmother, um, elementary teacher, writer, author. Um, I don't know how you have time for all of these things. Um, you've done historical presentations. You've done uh, things for our school children. You have written, you write recurrently, right, for the senior voice. Yes. Uh, do a column uh, okay. for that. Um, you said at one point that you did this story because of your love of animals and everything else, but I think maybe there's a more personal story with Annie the Railroad Dog. Uh, several things I'd like to know. Who was Annie the Railroad Dog and who is Loretta Burdett? Well, Loretta Burdett is a friend of mine. She's lived in Fort Collins many years, was a teacher also and a counselor. And um, her father was Chris DeMuth. He was a railroad man. And um, he and these railroad men one day went over on a trip to uh, Windsor, Colorado and over toward Greeley. And as they came back by the blacksmith shop in Windsor, they saw this um, little dog. Now this picture here is a picture of those railroad men. There were five of them. And um, this picture was taken in the 1930s. Now is Loretta's dad one of these? Yes, Loretta's dad's this man in the middle. Right in the middle. And uh, Loretta shared these pictures with me. She. Um, has a love for the past and a special love for railroads uh, because her father was a railroad man and also because she loves dogs too. And um, she, she knew Annie. Her father used to bring Annie over to their house sometimes for exercise. And uh, Loretta was going to be here today, but she's ill. So um, she asked if I would uh, just mention about her father. And uh, that was a picture of her father. Now the story about Annie uh, began Quite a few years ago, when I was a little girl, I remember seeing Annie. We lived in Old Town, and it was just a block from the train station. And that train station has now been um, taken down to make room for Laporte Avenue, to widen Laporte Avenue. And in the book, it shows um, the old train station. It was a beautiful uh, stone building. And in 1953, they wanted to widen that building, so they uh, went wide in the street, so they removed the building, and that's near Washington's uh, restaurant now. But um, like I said, when I was a little girl, I used to walk past the train station. I have a twin sister, and we'd stop and see the dog on our way to school. And then Annie passed away. But I would like to tell you a little bit about how the story began. Would you like to yes, know that? Yes, I'd like to know. Well, she was a shabby little dog, and nobody wanted her. She, so the man at the blacksmith shop had her and these railroad men came by one day and they said whose dog is that and she said oh it's nobody's dog she's just a mutt and she's going to have puppies and I don't want her so they said well we'd like to have her for our mascot so they t put her on the train and they put her in the caboose in this here um, part here where she could she could have her first train ride so she rode from there over to Fort Collins and uh, when they got to Fort Collins they didn't know what to do with her. They thought maybe the train station ma manager might not like her in the depot, so they put her in the basement where it was warm by the furnace. And um, she ate down there, and they, the men would bring their scraps and feed her. And uh, she lived to be a quite old dog. Uh, in my book, I have a picture of Mr. DeMuth with Annie, and this is about the only real picture we have of Annie. This was in her olden days when she got arthritis and she was kind of stoved up and uh, he would take her to his house. Well the day that Annie, uh, after first of all she was living there and she had her puppies and we, I don't know exactly how many puppies, I've tried to do research and we don't know exactly how many puppies she had but I, in my book, I had an artist draw this, illustrate that picture, and I just made three puppies because I thought about the three pigs and the three bears, so I thought I'd have three puppies. But the puppies were given away to some little children, and I think one of the railroad men took one of the puppies. And uh, when they would take her for a walk, the reason I wanted to include this in this book is because since it's local history, I wanted to mention about the places she walked past. And she walked past the fire station. The fire station's been restored. And it, she used to go by there, and the firemen would pet her. She'd go by the Silver Grill, which is a few doors away. They'd give her scraps. 
and she'd go by the Northern Hotel. I have a picture of the Northern Hotel. That, back when I was a young girl, it was the fanciest hotel in town. And um, they, there was a soda fountain there. I used to go there and get um, malt. My sister and I would divide one. We couldn't drink a whole one then. I can now. <laughs> but um, they would give her ice cream. And so uh, she was treated quite well in the neighborhood. Well, one day she didn't feel very well, and uh, she had those puppies. Then she got older. As she got older, she got so she didn't want to go on the train anymore, but she would greet the passengers as they would come in. The passenger train would come down from Wyoming, from Casper, Cheyenne, and uh, Fort Collins, and she'd always be out there to greet the the, chill, the, pe the passengers. One day she wasn't out there and they went downstairs and they found that she died. And so the railroad men didn't know what to do. They wanted to, save, to bury her nearby. So they buried her by the railroad tracks right near the station. And this is a picture here of, the, of her, to, uh, her stone. And um, Loretta DeMuse's father used to do cement work before he worked for the railroad, so he made that head marker. Now that head marker is um, 1948, that's 60 years ago that she died, and that's still there. But it's there because Loretta didn't want them to tear that down when they fixed the railroad tracks there. So uh, she talked to Carol Tunner, who's a preservation specialist in Fort Collins, and Carol went to work to get it saved. And then they got a grant from the Colorado Historical Society, and they built this beautiful fence around it with uh, brick pillars, and um, it's preserved now, and that's a landmark in Fort Collins, and so I think the children in Fort Collins should see that landmark and um, see that little uh, head marker. Well, if, if families want to take their um, children down to see this, where would they find this? Well, it's right on the, by Laporte Avenue and Mason, right by the tracks there, near Washington's. Uh, restaurant or bar and grill, <laughs> and uh, it's you can you can see it very well from the from Laporte Avenue and Mason. Okay, so is there parking down there where yes, people there get is. out so they go in and take mm -hmm. a look? Okay. Yeah, and there's a little plaque right on this pillar that says um, to Annie, our railroad dog. It said um, she used to greet the passengers and so forth. And there's always some artificial flowers there that somebody puts on her grave. Um, uh, during different seasons, um, I think there's poinsettias now for Christmas and Easter time. Sometimes there's lilies. And uh, so she's not forgotten. And the main thing, the reason I wrote the book, is um, this lady, his name is Don Weimer. She's a wonderful artist and a sculpturist. She made this beautiful statue, it's life size of Annie, last year, and the library bought it. And they have it in front of the library, and they have little footprints, little dog footprints around it. And that was dedicated, I think it was in August. Um, I was at the dedication. And they have the statue down there, so when children go to the library, they can stop and see the little statue of the dog. And a lot of children have bought the book at the library, and they can also check it out at the Fort Collins Library. Um, I named this chapter, All Good Dogs Go to Heaven. I think Annie was a good dog, and I'm sure that's where she is. I guess that's about the main thing about this book. And um, Well, I have a couple questions for you about it in that <clears throat> some of our second grade teachers came out and you autographed copies of the book for, um, personalized it for their schools and the, the children can read the story. But as you look back and you've lived in Fort Collins a long time and second grade is where we have our local history, what, what would you like the, the, the students in the Fort Collins School District to, to know about? Yeah. Why is Annie important, or the railroad, or what is it historically that you would like them to get out of reading the book? Well, I think one thing, um, it tells about Old Town, and uh, I have a love for Old Town. It uh, shows the buildings down the Old Town, and it has the um, grave down there that they can visit, and I think it makes children appreciate um, animals more. I love animals, and especially dogs. and. Um, it's just a good lesson. It's a good historical lesson for them, for local history, something about our town. Okay, well, if you think back, and if I'm taking my, um, my friend or the children down to Old Town, what are some of the things you remember about Old Town that, 
that would have been there when, when Annie was around. Was there. Oh, there were a lot of things, and some have been, it's too bad, some of the buildings have been taken down. One of the main things was the first national bank on the corner of Mountain Avenue and College Avenue was a gorgeous building with white big pillars, and it had a square clock. You could see the time from all four directions, and uh, that was um, torn down and put this small bank on one story building on that beautiful lot and uh, that was a historic building that was removed. But a lot of the buildings have been restored and I'm really happy and I, I love the way they've done Old Town. They made it come alive. It was, it was kind of degenerate. It's yeah. bad shape and now it's, it's a good thing. Well, and what was it like when you were young? When you would go, mm -hmm. you go down, it, there were no malls? No, no shopping malls. And everything was right in walking distance. We lived near the Northern Hotel. We had a hotel, my parents had a hotel which was just a block from that train station. And I could go to Montgomery Wards was there, Penny's was there in the next block, and Walgreens was downtown, and everything was right downtown. You didn't have to go clear out south of town to get, get things. And um, I have a lot of good memories of, of Fort Collins. The city park, I'd get, my sister and I would get on the streetcar and ride out city park and go swimming and go um, on the, the streetcar to high school. and. Uh, I was really glad they restored the streetcar. Okay, so when you yeah. talk about getting on the streetcar and going to high school, it was the old Fort Collins High School. Yeah, old Fort Collins High, huh? And we called it the Gallop and Goose. It cost us a nickel to ride it then. And I think it's a dollar now, it's donation, more or less. But I, I love that streetcar because we had all our transportation. We didn't have to have, mother didn't have to take us anywhere. Yeah. Go to the park, the city park. Of course, it's the same city park out on um, West Mountain Avenue. and. Uh, well, as you're thinking back uh, during the era of Annie, that was World War II era. Yes, uh huh. Uh, what kind of impact did, did the war have? You were just a young girl, right? Mm -hmm. Yes, I was a teenager. I remember the troop trains going through town past this train station, and I imagine Annie saw a lot of soldiers and servicemen go past going off to war. And my twin sister, this is sort of a little funny joke, but my twin sister and I were just skinny little teenagers and we thought it was our patriotic duty to go and wave to the soldiers, give them, tell them goodbye. <laughs> but it was a, just kind of a fun thing to do. But it was sort of had that, that small town, hometown feeling. Yeah, that. We knew almost everybody in town in those days. Well, I think um, in the 1930s and 40s, the town was only 12,000. And I think when I was in college, it was only about 20,000. and a um, a and M College instead of CSU then was only uh, wasn't quite 5,000 students because that, it couldn't become a university until it had 5,000 students. So um, I went I went here to college and then I went over to Greeley to get my degree in teaching. Okay, now you took in an interest in in history and you've written several other books. What are some of the other things you've written? About? Well, um, history of of Larmer County. I love history, and. Um, there's two books, of course, I've had some co-authors and helpers. And I was editor of uh, the book on um, the history of Larmer County and then um, the veterans of Larmer County. I'm very interested in veterans. My father was a World War I veteran and my brother was World War II. My husband was uh, uh, Korea. And um, so I was secretary for the veterans when they did the war memorial. And uh, that's a real place, place in my heart to have that memorial out there at Edora Park. And uh, I did a book with, uh, about veterans of Larmer County, and it's about um, 400 veterans' names and histories, and the history of the wars. And uh, it's, it's a nice veterans book. I've sold all those books, sold all the history of Larmer County. And Annie uh, just printed 500 and uh, sold all of them, so I had a reprint made. Okay. Well, I'm just thinking that we've, we've grown so much over the past few years and new people coming into the community. What would your advice be to them if they wanted to find out something about the history of this area? Where would you advise them to go and what would you have them go see? Well, um, I, I belong to Fort Collins Historical Society and I'm past president for a couple of years. And I think if they'd go at those historical society meetings, we have a lot of uh, good speakers and field trips. That would be one way to learn about Fort Collins. And then, of course, go to the library, and there's some wonderful books about um, Fort Collins. Okay, maybe down to the museum. The museum, yes. And then find some places around town they could go. And you know, the museum has some wonderful um, gifts in that gift store, and antiques, and uh, it's not only just a history, it's a lot of things there. Okay, well, if you had one thing you'd want to share with uh, the 
the children of Fort Collins, especially our second graders who do the, the local history, what's the one thing you'd want them to remember about Fort Collins in maybe the 1930s mm -hmm. and 40s? Mm -hmm. That it was a smaller town then, and um, of course we didn't have as much crime or anything because there was less people, but it's uh, always had wonderful climate. I love Fort Collins, I just love everything about it. I have a little grandson that's in second grade, and um, he, uh, he loves history already. Oh, that, that's, I'm glad <laughs> to hear it's that. From his grandma. <laughs> yeah. Okay, well I'd like to thank you for taking time to come with us today and, and share this and uh, encourage people in the community if they would like to see uh, Annie's grave, they could go down to the, um, to the site where she's buried or go to the that's museum right. to get information or go to the library and check out books on our local Fort Collins history. Well, thank you for that's being right. with us. And thank you.